Hello everyone, today we will talk about the Kapada. Kapada is well known as uh, the FOPS team tool that allowing us to work with code and deliver enough user story in much more manageable manner. Um, so let's discuss what it is. So first of all, Kapada is a package that we could install into the specific org and after that uh, we will be able to first of all specify pipeline in Salesforce. So what is a pipeline? Pipeline is such kind of, uh, let's say, graph that allowing us to connect different environments between each other. So let's imagine that we have a couple of different environments, like for example in our case Dev1, Dev2 and Dev3. So they are integrated with int environment, int environment is integrated with UAT and UAT is integrated with the production. So here we could see that for example if it's necessary for us to deliver some user story we need to develop it on one of the dev org. After that we could deliver it to the int environment and then promote it to UAT and promote it to production when it will be necessary. And also what is uh, interesting here is uh, in terms of DevOps we could also schedule the actual deployment from the changes from example from UAT to the production when it will be necessary so it's pretty uh, cool tool and allowing us to manage releases in such kind of manner. Also one more item to cover uh, it's um, you could see that here we have numbers and uh, those numbers showing to us actually with icon uh, uh, below it um, where some changes are actually missed so that means that Kapada also allowing us to have such kind of uh, cool visibility as it allowing us to understand what environment is um, not back promoted so where something is missed and if some dev team is working on dev2 for example in our case that they, it means that there are not all latest changes that are actually introduced at this moment to the int environment. Uh, I think that uh, we need to discuss now uh, some centric items of the Kapada management. It's in the Kapada, the centric items, uh, it's uh, centric item, it's user story. Uh, user story is an item where we could actually uh, store all information about story points, uh, about priority, we could store here a story description, who is the developer for this user story, business analyst, who is the test script owner, what is our actual acceptance criteria and what is our uh, functional specifications around it. But it's not all information that we store in the user story, but also here we store in information about uh, credentials. So that means that if we have, for example, in our case, a couple of dev orgs, uh, on one of the orgs this user story was completed. So that means that we need to connect to the user story some specific credentials. Like for example, here you could see that uh, we have connected um, the fun environment or credentials and environment and uh, also here if it's necessary and we would like to fully uh, have management in the Kapada done via actual Kapada so here for example we have uh, links to the sprint to release and uh, stuff like this and also as you could see here we have uh, some projects specified so that means that in the Kapada we could actually run in parallel a couple of projects a couple of teams even a couple of pipelines and environments like for example in parallel we could perform development of the uh, internal uh, team needs, uh, development of business team needs and uh, development of consumer uh, team needs. So all this kind of stuff are actually allowed for us to build uh, in the Kapada. Uh, so once we have selected credentials, what uh, actually uh, Kapada allowing us to do. It's allowing us to uh, specify from this specific environment what kind of metadata uh, we would like to grab. Like for example you could see here in this video, let me just play it. You could see how it's behave. Here we have two tabs. One of them is all metadata available on the org and selected metadata is what we just selected with filters available. And for example here in the type we could select what kind of metadata we would like to include. And uh, you could see we could also select last modified date, created by and so on and so forth. Like for example if you will decide that you would like to add Apex classes, Apex triggers. And so after that we will be able to see uh, here uh, you could see type, we could see who was uh, modifying that item, when it was done, by whom it was created. So sometimes it's necessary for us to find it quickly because um, sometimes we have here buttons that allowing us to select uh, metadata changes automatically. And uh, once it's done, we know what items we would like to commit, we are clicking on the commit changes button and what it's actually do, uh, Kapada has integration um, with 
have integration with JIT and uh, what it's do it's automatically grabbing metadata from this environment in our case def1 and uh, preparing a branch in the JIT and this branch in the JIT um, actually uh, available for us after this uh, commit will be done and after that we could create uh, let's say uh, we could create pull request, validate it by the IT team, and after that we could uh, set up a flag ready to promote. And also you could see that for user story all commits are, are automatically stored in the actual user story, and we could see the actual metadata. And uh, here what else is available is we uh, automatically have uh, uh, conflicts items right when it's necessary for us to uh, resolve conflicts also we have possibility to run uh, quality gates in terms of uh, quality gates uh, we have here as you could see static code analysis possibility to integrate it and selenium tests if it's necessary for us uh, to run and it could be added in the um, right corner if you will select that we would like for example run static code analysis based on what we have in the JIT or uh, manage selenium tests if it's um, required for us So let's jump to the next. So as um, we mentioned, conflict resolving is also possible via Copada. So here if someone also performing development on the same files, you will get a notification here in the status related list. Uh, you will see that, for example, for those items, uh, we have uh, potential conflicts and it should be resolved. So that's why we need to take um, care about it. Um, yeah, so always uh, related metadata uh, is available here. We could see to which user story it's available. So it's pretty um, easy navigation is included into this uh, Kapada package that is uh, installed on the uh, main org. So also, uh, as you could see here, we have a possibility to see pull request. So uh, when we will click on the link, what it will do, it will actually redirect us uh, into the JIT. And in the JIT, uh, we will be able to see what um, exactly changes are included and uh, Kapada helping us to address it. Sometimes it's automatically syn synchronize uh, user story number or maybe description into the uh, possible pull request um, data also one item to mention it's for example not always uh, we have in use uh, standard um, items from the Kapada. Uh, i mean user stories uh, because uh, some clients use jira and for us to work with jira what we have it's uh, we could specify integration between jira and Kapada. like for example let's imagine we are using uh, Jira Atlas Atlas and Jira and in the Jira we uh, was working on some user story and after that we specified that user story is ready uh, for example uh, for development in that case what could happen is we could specify integration in such kind of manner that uh, in that case um, user story will be synchronized with the Kapada and in the Kapada placeholder will be created and so once we will finish with the development we could go to the Kapada specify credentials on the org and uh, attach all necessary uh, changes here. Uh, also in terms of its uh, self-force package, uh, we could customize it, uh, make updates in the fields, uh, what will be necessary for us to do. And uh, for example, at this moment, let's review an example of the uh, pipeline. So you could see based on these numbers here, we could see like, for example, some features were developed and here for example on the dev1 we have four user stories prepared uh, and we need to promote them here for the dev2 we need to back promote some feature and here on the dev3 we also need to back promote uh, some functionality so that means that uh, someone who is performing uh, environment management uh, will be able to take a look into this pipeline and you could see it's a drop down with the different pipelines uh, he will be able to take a look understand what is happening with every uh, environment and based on this information uh, um, necessary actions uh, will be done. Uh, how in general those story looks like that we are ready to promote. So you could see here, for example, uh, we have a list of user stories that we would like to promote from Dev and one. Uh, dev1 environment to uh, int environment right and all this user story we are selecting which one of them we would like to promote and uh, here uh, in the right top corner we have this button available promote and deploy and what it will allow us to do it will allow us to actually 
promote and deploy those user stories to the next environment uh, that we would like to do. Uh, the same situation is for the back promotion. Uh, when we need to uh, back promote some user stories from the pipeline from one environment to the, uh, for example, dev environment, like in our case we have for the uh, dev2 and the 3, we could do um, the same. Uh, so the situation is totally the same when we need to promote changes from uh, UAT, for example, to Prot or from integration environment to UAT. The situation is totally the same. Here we will have uh, specific indicators that will allow us to understand what is um, exactly happening and what we have. So also in terms of uh, configuration of the pipeline, uh, in terms of uh, development behavior, you could see we could have development uh, behavior for the, it could be automated and back promotions could be manual or for example we could change it, it could be uh, in a scheduled manner, scheduled back promotions and scheduled deployment. So it's a pretty configurable way for us to actually, uh, for us as for um, DevOps team uh, to handle what we have in terms of uh, Kapada implementation and possibility to support all our environments that we have in pipeline. Also, if you are preparing a new environment, we could easily connect it uh, into the pipeline and set up it here. And usually it's something that uh, DevOps team uh, need to take care about it uh, here. So here we could see an example of the uh, big promotions from int to dev3 environment. So the situation is totally the same. We're selecting user stories that we would like to move and so we could uh, big promote it and deploy it to the environment. Uh, so I think that additional items that I would like to add, it's uh, sometimes um, user stories that we have are actually not just, um, let's say, custom metadata or any kind of metadata or profiles. Sometimes it's an epic script that needs to be executed like kind of items of run list. So uh, Kapada is a very clever system and what they did uh, in the user story that uh, we have, they have also possibility to update a uh, related list and this related list um, have a name, uh, let me recall it, uh, deployment tasks and when we create a deployment task we could specify should it be run in the uh, before deployment, should it be run after deployment, should it be done manual or should it be Apex and for Apex what is interesting uh, system automatically perform Apex steps uh, running those scripts um, and after execution it set up status automatically in the Kapada so it's very useful and uh, we let's say could in one place attach all of kind of items related to user story and it's not necessary for us to manage uh, run lists separately and it's a really safe uh, times for us uh, if you would like you know like or if you have for any reason big run list in uh, in our agenda, it's something that we need to cover because if you have a very big pipeline, right, and for through each of environment you need to perform it, uh, it's a headache. And here is such kind of tool allowing us to, let's say, not not have it. So I think that at this moment, in terms of introduction to Kapada, that's all. So most of that video is prepared to just introduce you such kind of tool if you are not aware. And um, what I would like to uh, mention. Also, it's at this moment uh, the following um, resource is available. It's um, successcapada.com, and here what is available. Uh, here we have trainings, and uh, with those uh, trainings, uh, what you could do is you could uh, play with uh, Capada, you could learn latest updates, and uh, you could even get certificates. Um, so all of these kind of items are available here as well as. Um, media from where you could find how-to videos, you could find demos, so all these items are actually available and uh, registration here is free so you could just um, register, you could just learn Kapada items and at the end what you could do is you could just uh, pass and get certificate as a Kapada Basics 1 and Kapada Basics 2 as I remember. So at this moment that's all and thank you for your attention.